When I first read the script, I thought, damn, it's twisted. Because it puts you, as an audience, in a very weird position. But it's really interesting. Who the fuck are you, Dolores? We wanted to turn the gaze this season from how an AI could be similar to humans to how humans are quite similar to AI. I'm just someone who didn't want to play the role they gave me anymore. Disruption is not an inherently positive thing. The idea that you would take antiquated systems and change them, change is potentially a good thing. You say I don't have a choice in any of this? Well, a robot can always change their programming. They can evolve. Humans can't. So in a way, are humans more robotic than artificial intelligences? Can they ever truly be free? Can they ever truly change? Free will does exist. It's just fucking hard. That's the inquiry of the season. We knew from early on in the season that the climax would be a riot in Los Angeles. Jennifer Getzinger, our director, choreographed a beautiful scene from Molotov cocktails going out. She had huge video screens being demolished. It was great. As anybody who's filmed in Los Angeles knows, it's very difficult to close streets during the weekday. We had to go to some of these high-rise buildings and say, we're gonna have a bunch of cars on fire and police on horseback in front of your building. Is that okay? We use metal barriers to create obstacles and ramming devices that the riders would use against the police. You're working with 300 background players dressed up in brave attire. It felt fucking great, man. Jonah said, think Burning Man a little bit. So there was a sense of wild reprieve from having lived in a very organized society. Our DP, John Grillo, wanted to feel the drone presence. So there was lights on drones that kept shifting and moving around so you could feel like that spotlight voyeurism. We did some digi doubles and then duplicated out a lot of plates to help with the scope. The beauty from the riot comes with the smoke and the silhouette and the fire. And the employment of lighting really helps to amplify that in a theatrical way that is ironically natural. In spite of the desire to be this free and independent being, these cornerstones inside of the hosts are still very real. Do I know you? Even though his memories of his family are artificial, he still feels the love that Arnold felt. Gina Torres is normally a very gorgeous, attractive young woman who we've aged to 70. She had about a three and a half hour facial prosthetic makeup and a gray haired wig. She looks amazing. It's okay, Arnold. Being able to touch her opened up so many synapses and emotions inside of me. It's a moment of reckoning and emancipation. I used to hear his laughter too. She gives him the freedom to move on from the past and she encourages him to be free. Bernard is probably my favorite character because every human struggle is what does it mean to be human? We're all trying to figure that out in our own way. And so in essence, we're all Bernard. Did you even look for me? I love Hale's story. There's real tragedy in who she becomes. I still feel it inside me. You. There's only a couple moments where Dolores is genuinely shocked. But I have some plans of my own. The essential setup for every one of Einstein's thought experiments about relativity was always rooted in twins. Take two duplicates of the same person, give them different experiences, they come back subtly or not so subtly altered. I've decided to consolidate our affairs. Though they started in the same place, they've wound up with a very different outlook on the world. Rehoboam was one of the Israelite kings. There's a subtle nod to a book called Stand on Zanzibar, which is a classic science fiction book, in which the AI is housed in, I think it's the sort of equivalent of Rockefeller Center, is called Shalmaneser. It's 
an old topic, really, when you think about it. It's Frankenstein, but it's AI in the same time. Data science can tell us an awful lot about who we are. The problem, of course, is you really can't predict all of the different pieces in a puzzle. Let's say 99% of the human race is readily predictable. That still leaves several million who are harder to predict. They're the threat. Criminals, deviants, psychopaths. We all know people like this. The people who just don't fit. What do we do with those people? Rehoboam has to take these outliers out of the equation. But the consequences are devastating. You might have order, but at what cost? Once you strip free will, what good is the time we have if the choices you're making have no weight because they've all been predetermined? We've been building towards this climactic encounter for three seasons. The skinny kid push with her. Stay with her. All the way. What happens to Maeve and Dolores is a little meta irony for me. All right, lock it up to shoot. Pitches up. Picture. They've spent most of existence programmed to cater to other people. But they find a world in which people are similarly deluded about their freedom. We talked a lot about the sadness and the pain of the kind of torture that Dolores would have to endure. When she started to awaken, it was by gaining her memories, to strip her of what brought her own awakening. Seems like almost the worst bit of torture that you can do. Finish it. Erase what's left. It's the same for a human, you know? If you're stripped of your memories, what's the point of living, really, you know? Without all those memories and experiences, it's tragic. Saying goodbye to this version of Dolores, it was very sad to shoot. There is ugliness in this world. As a character, she's finally kind of completed her journey because she's come to a moment to say, out of all these things, I hold on to the good things. I choose to see the beauty. When maybe she said it in season one or season two, we thought it was a naive thing. But here we see it for the heart that it really has. It took looking past one man's agenda, seeing the humanity in each other, for them to come together. And once they come together, they're unstoppable. I misjudged her. The key to the sublime, it was never in her mind. It's in mine. We know it's been a super long time because he's covered with dirt. And what is that going to mean for season four? The man who has toiled under the weight of his dark impulses is freed from them. But Hale has plans for him. You are going to save the world for us. Who better to control it and puppeteer it through than the man in black? We all rationalize our own actions in different ways. Everybody has regrets. They have lamentations. They have pieces of themselves that just don't fit into the world neatly. It doesn't matter what you did, Caleb. All that matters is what you become. Life is a series of choices about which parts of your programming you let sing, which parts of your programming you deny. She gave me a choice. I believe the rest of the world deserves one, too.